A Canto 10 of Srimad Bhagavatam, Chapter 84, The Sages' Teachings at Kurukshetra, and Text 26. Today we have directly seen your feet, the source of the holy Ganges, which washes away volumes of sins. Perfected yogis can at best meditate upon your feet within their hearts, but only those who render you wholehearted devotional service, and in this way vanquish the soul's covering, the material mind attain you as their final destination. Therefore, kindly show mercy to us, your devotees. Please repeat. Today we have directly seen, Today we have directly seen your, feet, your feet, the source of the Holy Ganges, which washes away volumes of sins. Perfected yogis can at best meditate, at best meditate upon your feet. Within their, hearts. within their hearts, but only those who render you wholehearted devotional service, and in this way vanquish the soul's covering, the material mind, attain you as their final destination, therefore kindly show mercy to us, your devotees. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada's disciples and followers. The holy river Ganges has the power to destroy all sorts of sinful reactions because she originates at the Lord's Lord's feet and thus contains the dust of His feet. Explaining this verse, Srila Sridhar Swami says, if the Lord might advise the sages that they need not concern themselves with devotional practices because they are already far advanced in spiritual knowledge and austerity. They thereby respectfully decline such a suggestion, pointing out that only those yogis who have destroyed their material mind and ego by surrendering to Krishna and pure devotional service can attain full perfection. They conclude by praying to the Lord that he favor them in the most merciful way by making them his devotees. Okay. Nama Om Shivaraya Krishna Shai Bhutare Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamani Pnamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Guravani Prachari Nirvishi Shishunyavadi Paschachari Shitari Hare some significant words that we find here. Sadrishima, we have seen. Astarsham. Angarim, feet. Um, aga, sins. Does that have a connection with Aga Sulur? Perhaps. Uh, fl oga, floods. Marsha. You think it might be Marsh. But it's not. Tirta. Anybody knows what Tirta means? It's a holy pilgrimage. That's right. A holy pilgrimage place or pilgrimage yeah. site. And in this case, we're referring to the Ganges. And Riddhi is another word that we might know. Riddhi. Riddhi. It's the heart. Um, what else do we have here? Bhakti, of course. Bhakti. Devotion. Devotion, okay. And Upahata destroys the material mentality. Mm, okay, so the Gatim is something we might come upon quite a few times. What's Gati or Gatim? Destination, but we say parangati, ultimate superior destination. And then anugrahana means, hey, please be kind, you know, please have mercy. Okay. okay, so the sages are speaking, they continue to be expressing realizations uh, about Krishna who is present before them. And they're 
taking notice of Krishna's feet, which are described to be lotus-like, and which have actually been activated as uh, walking uh, to penetrate through the layers of the universe. Bhamana Dev, uh, who is the dwarf Brahman avatar incarnation, he took three steps of land when he was having an ordeal with Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj was known to be a, a member of the Daitya dynasty, that means the tough guys, <laughs> the gangsters of the universe. Uh, but he actually maintained some good habits. One of them was to give in charity. Like everybody remembers Karna in the Mahabharata. Karna, he was a very charitable person, very kind, even to the point where he gave his Kundalas and Kabacha. Kundalas means earrings, and he had a chess piece that was permanent. That was part of his fixture when he was born. He had these things that he was born with, and they meant his protection. And so Indra came in the form of a Brahman, like a sadhu, says, uh, you give to the Brahmins, you're known to give to us. And so I'm asking for something very special. And Karna says, what is it? I mean, your, I need your Kundalas and your Kavacha. And reluctantly he gave them, because he's known, he's got a reputation for being a giving person. And that, of course, would frustrate his efforts and means that he would have, he would have lost his protective measures in battle. So in the same way, Bali Maharaj was also charitably disposed. When Vamana came to uh, Bali's kingdom, uh, Bali's guru, Shukracharya, said, listen, don't. This is Vishnu. This is Hari in disguise. Don't give him anything. So that confused Bali because Bali was trained by his own guru, oh, you should give to the Brahmins, give to Vishnu, be kind to them, and so on like that. And of course, Brahmins in a Daicha dynasty, in an environment of demons, would take on a different flavor. They would be teachers that were ill-motivated. So it was just, Vamana was a stranger, and he was a, like a young boy, you know, with an umbrella, protecting himself from the from the sun and, and the rain. Because in India, you use an umbrella, not just for rain, because that doesn't happen too often. Now it's the rainy season. Uh, but uh, you can, Brahmins in particular, they'll protect themselves from the blazing sun. So that's, I remember walking, and I was in Northern Ontario, and it was so hot, you know, I just had to, it was like one o'clock in the afternoon. I had to use an umbrella. I just took that umbrella and people find it, found it very kind of odd and strange. Maybe cool at the same time. You know? I remember one guy who was on his motorcycle and he just drove along and when you look back, he had to have a good look. It's got this unusual number one monk, number two umbrella, number three when there's no rain. <laughs> okay, so uh, Bhamana came. And uh, he asked for three steps of land, three paces. And Bali says, okay, are you sure that's all you want? I can give you a lot more than that. I have a lot more at my disposal. And then Vamana said something interesting. He said, well, you know, even if you give me half the universe, uh, you know, it's uh, the sense is I never satisfied. It's very profound. And I'll never be satisfied. So. Just three paces will do. So, in his back, you know, this Shukracharya's guru is saying, don't give, tell you don't give. But Bali Maharaj being confused by the equivocal, let's say, uh, what seemed to be uh, a contradiction of lessons given to him by the same per source, says, my guru says I should give in charity, now I should, he says I should not give in charity. I'm confused, but I'm going to stick to my habit and I will give in charity, three paces of land. So we did, Vamana then grew, he became a giant and much more than a sunflower 
plant and uh, it became huge. It covered half the universe with one base, the other half, second half with the other one, and the third probably got it. Okay, I get it, I understand. I understand. Okay. You want to know where to put the third footstep? On my head. Okay. So he did. Ramana did. Gently. And so, in any case, when Vamana was walking the universe, he pulled through the layers of the universe, which is a layer of earth, a layer of fire, water, etc., and, and then the more subtle elements. And that's what uh, water from the uh, Garba, Garbadaka ocean uh, spilled in and became what we know as the Ganges. When the water leaked through, um, it happened to hit Shiva in meditation, and he absorbed this water in his matted hair. He held it all together. And then at some point, Shiva, he actually released his, uh, he shook his hair, and it all sort of fell in one spot, and that became a stream, which became the Ganges that flows through a portion of the earth. And that is one of the most sacred places on the planet. And so that is the connection between Krishna's feet and the Ganges. And therefore it is sacred. And we look at some of the leelas, the pastimes, and Chaitanya Leela. And uh, it is said that Jagannath is God in the form of wood. And it is uh, Krishna who's in the form of liquid water as the Ganges. That's God as water. So that's how we are to look at these manifestations of God in water wood. Uh, you'll find them in, present everywhere practically. But it's actually quite easy to worship water. Uh, if some of you have the good fortune to go to Haridwar, you go to what's called the Haripuri, and there's lots of steps that take you to the Ganges. So every night they have a big arti, and that arti is like it was massive flame by one of the Pajaris, you know, and offers that flame to the water. And then people also get a chance, because it's like a sponsorship program. They also have these little diyas. You know, with, you know what a diya is? It's the flame with ghee in it. And it's put into a little uh, earthen cup in a terracotta. And that's placed on a lotus petal. And then that after the RT is over, People go and offer, and then it flows down the river. All these little lights go, take their own little course and go like this. It's absolutely beautiful. When I was there, I guess the last time I went there, um, I was thinking, I was with about two or three other devotees, yeah. And they were from Canada. I had two brahmacharis with me. And I said, you know what's missing here? It's Kirtan. They had an RT and they I think there's a big recording of Jagadish, Jagadish Hare, etc. Common bhajan sun in most Hindu temples. And then uh, after that was over, people dispersed. So we, we decided to get in there. We did our kirtan. And people were stopping. Instead of just moving along to their destination points, to their gati, they actually stopped for a bit. And the people that were most enthusiastic about our kirtan were two people of two kinds. One were the uh, homeless folks, and the other ones were the, oh, another kind of homeless folks. That's the sadhus and saffron. They were enjoying it, you know, Hare Krishna, like anything like that. So, so we felt we did, we inserted the sankirtan system at that program. It would have been nice if they could keep it up after the RT over do some kirtan. Now that's actually at the heart of Kali Yuga, this age of darkness. It is saying kirtan, yagya. I remember when Satsuru Maharaj came to join us here, 1976, I think. We had two big Vyasa sons, Prabhupada, 
was pushed forward. We had one on either side, and we got one, out one. And he gave a little introductory speech. And it was based on the verse from the Bhagavatam. Kirtanat eva Krishna shya mukta utsana param vajay. Well, which means, kaler, let's start from the beginning. Kaler dosha, dosha means, dosha means, you know, well, let's say wrong points, or let's say negative, negative. Uh, kaler, kaler means kali, kaler dosha niri raja. Right? My dear king, you know, talking to Parikshit Maharaj, she could have goes from say, the good thing about this age is that you can get clean, just like somebody can say, COVID-19 is negative, it's all negative, negative, negative. But the good thing about it is that it, it's allowing the Ganges to get cleaned up. Now you can look at the light side of everything. So Satsurup Maharaj was talking about this, um, the one good thing about Kali Yuga, the, the, the place of darkness, the ocean of faults. One good thing is the Kirtan. And uh, that's what works. I attended a, a wedding, which was done on a Sunday morning, where two devotees got together and in matrimony. And we had Atma Tattva, who's a god brother, and he always does a good job at these things. He speaks well, he's kind of a real joker. And I remember he was starting to do the mantras and everything like that. And, go through all the physical, you know, gestures of, with the paraphernalia that's there, dharma panapro. And, uh, you know, he made a couple of remarks. He was saying to the devotee, his name is Karna. He's, he's the one that's getting married. He said, hey, you look so good. I feel like marrying you. And everybody had a good laugh because he's a joker. But then he said something that wasn't a joke. It was much more serious. He said, Okay, I'm doing all these rituals, but if you all chant Hare Krishna, then uh, that's the only thing that works. It's the only thing that works in this Kali Yuga. Recently, we had two devotees last Saturday who passed away, one in the East End, uh, East End, and one in the West End. And uh, we, you know, devotees had to arrange for pundits to be there. You know, so, one of our own pundits, Ramananda Roy, who you know, took care of this. Thing. And you know, there's standard rituals that goes along with doing the last rites. It's one of the samskars. But the most important thing behind these samskars is the chanting of Hare Krishna. If somebody tries to convince you otherwise that uh, all these rituals are the most, it is the uh, Paramgatim, it is the supreme destination, then they're actually wrong. The real purification process for Kali Yuga is the chanting of Hare Krishna. When Prabhupada had uh, Krishna Balaram Mandir open up, um, uh, when it was uh, at the inauguration of the deity installation, Krishna Balaram, um, he had invited all the local pandits so that people would accept this as bona fide, you know, that this whole ritual is blessed now. But then Prabhupada, he encouraged his own disciples, men and women, to chant, even though they weren't so expert in these uh, rites and so on, practices. Uh, he, he writes, by the way, write W-R-I-T-E-S, he writes in the Chaitan Shartamrita that, I have considered that the chanting of Hare Krishna is more important than the other rites, the rituals and so on like that. So this is one thing to, uh, to, to consider that uh, the, the mantra always has to be there with us. It must accompany us uh, in our travels and throughout our daily activities. Somebody asked me to give a class today in Florida about...